Hey there, and welcome to a new episode of Why Not 3. Today we're going to be talking about the silent day, and I'm going to go step by step into how I do it, and I explain a little bit better uh, on the blog post that I wrote on Medium, and the videos that I posted on my silent day, and why it exists, and how it can help you get more productive, and relieve stress, and how it's the only thing that I've experimented with everything, and the only thing that actually helped me to get decompressed and be more productive over the longer term. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Today we have three tips again, and the first thing that I just wanna share why it exists is uh, a long time ago when I was still studying and I was running, I was just setting up my companies, I had uh, too much to do. It was quite horrible. I had, I, I won't, before even I set up my companies, I had seven or eight part-time student jobs that paid really badly. So I was working on commission there. And it's the reason I had seven or eight jobs. And it was uh, things like tutoring. It was a sales job um, at two companies, UNICEF and Oxfam. Um, and there was... I, we, we did marketing campaigns, social media, stuff like that. Um, at one point I had like seven or eight students that I was tutoring in, in different subjects. Um, I, and yeah, it just, it piled up a lot. And at the same time I was studying in a really competitive university. And what happened was that I seemed to have burnouts every time exams popped up. I couldn't focus on my books. Um, it, and it's quite normal if you're at a competitive university when exams pop up, you see people uh, breaking down left and right. And I, I couldn't understand that this was normal, that this was a way of life that was normal. So I wanted to find something that I could use to biohack so that during the exam periods, I wouldn't break down and I could actually read my books because it took a while to decompress before I could actually focus on the words in my book. Um, and so the silent day came out of that necessity. I didn't want to burn out anymore to the point where I had to go to, um, um, it's called a kinesist in, in Europe. I think it's a physiotherapist uh, if you're in the States. I had to go to that person. I had to go to a doctor. Uh, just We were checking constantly uh, what I was deficient in. Um, and also checking my uh, ECG, my heart rate and stuff like that, just to see that uh, stress wasn't catching up and the cholesterol and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the Sunday came out of that. I, I was actually reading a book by Dr. John Gray. Um, I think it's called How to Stay Focused in a Hyper World. And he was talking about something uh, where you need to de-plug, a day where you de-plug. Uh, and then after I read that book, I was talking to a buddy of mine that was a conference manager for one of the biggest conferences in Germany. And he he was just going to this uh, retreat called a Vipassana retreat, which is a 10-day retreat where you completely plug out. You, I don't think you even eat the entire day. It's just at the end of the day or something like that. Uh, it's quite extreme. And it's nothing for me. I am, by definition, I'm an entrepreneur. I've always, my whole life, I've been doing stuff. Um, and for me to completely plug out for 10 days uh, would have been impossible just because I don't want to do that. I don't want to live my life where every, every year I have to de-plug for 10 days. Now, I am all for de-plugging for two weeks somewhere on a beach in Thailand. Um, without an iPhone or something and then just thinking about my business but not um, just doing nothing for 10 days uh, sitting in some cave so I wanted to biohack that I, I truly wanted to find a shortcut to that so I took uh, what my buddy was doing in the Vipassana he, he showed me the, the exact schedule that he had I took that and I took the idea of Dr. John Gray uh, where he says one day a week is enough to de-plug. And I kind of made a hybrid out of that. And I started experimenting with what would be the most effective silent day. And what popped up is what I now call the silent day, which is the number one thing that I share with everyone that comes on my training. Uh, because if you don't do that, no matter what you do, 
whether it's the supplements, the biohacking gear, everything that I keep telling you all the time. Uh, if you don't do the silent day, nothing will work. They are just drops in the ocean and the silent day is that only little piece that will make a dent in there. So the first thing that I clearly want to share because it's the most common mistake that I see everyone do is don't give up on it. You're not going to see any results in the first couple of weeks. You've been living a life that you're constantly stressed. You're constantly pressuring yourself. Do you really expect that within two, three weeks uh, after having lived a life of 30, 40, 50 years where you're constantly pressuring yourself, you really think that you're going to be suddenly decompressed? It doesn't work that way. So the whole point is to maintain that for less, at least two to three months. Uh, so, and, and your silent days truly have to be without stimulation, any stimulation. And it's the reason I call it the silent day. Uh, so for me, I, I don't eat. I don't, I don't talk to people. Um, I try not to read until I'm after uh, midday and when I feel that I'm completely decompressed. And, and when I feel that I'm bored. And in the beginning, I remember I had silent days where I was just sitting on my bed or on the couch and just staring in front of me. And I just, the moment you start doing that for 10 minutes and, and you just try to not do anything, which in the beginning is really hard, but that's a sign obviously that you need the silent day. Uh, you, everything starts popping up. Your brain starts saying, oh, I, I need stimulation. So I'm bored, I need to do something and you just sit there and after a while your brain just starts saying stuff like okay so uh you don't want to do something you don't want to stimulate me then i'll take this time to rest and that's where you want to get it you want to get it to the point where it's resting and then it's very natural that on a silent day you then start falling asleep which is uh tip number two actually once you've fallen asleep and you actually have energy and you're not uh, bored because you want stimulation uh, so after you've woken up then you can take a book and read a little bit uh, but again don't do anything electronic don't stimulate yourself too much and the beauty is that once you got in it to a point where now you are completely decompressed which is after a couple of months you now start having time to also reflect you reflect about your week you reflect about your uh, monthly goals, six month goals, yearly goals. Uh, this is the day where pretty much you don't have anything to do. So this is the perfect opportunity where you can look at your yearly goals or six month goals and see if you are going the, the right way or maybe you should adjust some course or something like that. So that's in essence the silent day and the most common problems about it and the step by step. For me again, uh, like I said in the beginning, I, I literally don't do anything and people don't believe me. And so on the 30 day challenge on day three, what I did is I literally took everybody with me so they can see that I don't do anything. I just sit there. Um, I was sitting next to a river and just staring there for I think it was like two, three hours until I got decompressed. And then it got a little bit cold and I went to the closest uh, five-star hotel that was right next to it. I was just sitting in the lobby and reflecting a little bit. So it's very, very important to have a proper silent day to properly do it and not start shortcutting because the silent day is already the shortcut. Uh, just make sure that you do it properly. So again, do nothing. And after two, three months, you'll start feeling stuff. And if you are bored after you have slept, read a book, but don't stimulate yourself too much. And then afterwards, when you feel better and you don't need long silent days, you can use that extra time to start reflecting and um, looking if you're growing the right way or if you should adjust somewhere. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next episode.